Hello. This is Thursday, September 8, 2022. This is a side show and I'm Theodore Parker. Talk about the mask a little bit. Wear them. If your positivity rate is over 5% in your area, good to have that with you and make use of it. Around here, temperatures about 64 degrees, going up to 81. Notice it's getting a little bit cooler and getting dark a little bit earlier. Before we get into today's news items that I have seen, selected, and decided to share with you from my perspective, based on the content of same, about the plug program a little bit, promote this thing. Sideshow, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, like, comment, share. That's on the bottom of the page, right under the viewing screen. If you're watching from YouTube, you can like and subscribe. Ring that like button, ding that bell, and subscribe if you're watching from YouTube, Facebook, or YouTube. The Sideshow with Theodore Parker. Hey, now that that's taken care of, first up, Biden advisors cite some concern with Taiwan's security bill amid distinct threat from China. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said the Biden administration has some concerns with the Taiwan security bill moving through Congress, as he said China continues to pose a distinct threat for the self-governing island nation. Sullivan said he planned to meet with lawmakers on Wednesday to discuss the Taiwan Policy Act of 2022. <clears throat> And um, he's affiliated with a program that will be airing this month based on the same comments and information. The bill would authorize $4.5 billion in funding to Taiwan through 2026, designate the island nation as a major non-NATO ally, and impose other measures to counter China's aggressive influence campaigns. Moving on, Barr says DOJ getting close to having enough evidence to indict Trump. As I said, the man's name is always in the news in some form or fashion, mostly in things that he has done not correct. If they will be able to make a technical case against Trump for his handling of sensitive documents the FBI found in his Mar-a-Lago home last month. Barr says he said the other question is to consider whether an indict a former president, what it would do to the country, and what precedent it would set. So as far as the special master being appointed, if you find sensitive government documents in a desk drawer next to Trump's passports, you can presume that he has knowledge of them. And as these articles and news pieces unfold and we get along the timeline, we must not forget that this was started a couple of months ago in June officially, after privately asking him, you know, we got some stuff missing over here and we think you might have it. And if you have it, can you just give it back? And that is us a lot of time, money, and aggravation. Which, as you can see from the fact that it's reached a court level, that that initial request for cooperation was not reciprocated. So now we have this situation. Gavin Newsom encounters an unexpected antagonist, Joe Biden. Now this, um, <laughs> of the things that I was going to say, 
were mentioned today, this kind of booms right, right, right up there with it. Because, oh, and before I leave to think about Trump, um, today's Thursday, yesterday was Wednesday, so they had an unveiling of President Obama's picture at the White House, to which he and Michelle Obama were invited and presided over by President Biden, because Trump did not take care of it while he was at the White House. So anyway, back to California. This was a little bit complicated for me uh, at first to understand the deal, but uh, California Governor Gavin Newsom has spent the past year taking on top Republicans. Now he finds himself at odds with President Joe Biden and other leading Democratic figures over pro-union legislation in his home state. Now, I'd already read another small article that about California restaurant workers and fast food workers getting their wages bumped up to $22 an hour. So I was like, oh, okay, good for them, because, you know, at some point in time, I've done fast food and so forth and so on, but $22 an hour is, is good. Um, and over the months, past months, I did a little thing where it showed the way people on Capitol Hill have had their salary increases taken care of compared to the quote unquote common blue collar wage earner amongst the populace of the United States and the gap difference. And this has been going on like for years, not just like this year because President Biden is in the administration or because President Obama was at the White House or something else like that. It is a significant gap over a long period of time about the wage earning differences between stratas of American society. So that being said, in order to bump it up, the common person would probably have to be making about $25 an hour. That's like the lowest tier person would have to make about $25 an hour for it to be comparable across the board as to wage earning. So we get into this thing about California. So Governor Gavin is set to, to knock it out the box again because besides the, the restaurant workers, which he was going to veto the bill, you got the farm workers, and they, you know, need health care and various other things like that. And um, he vetoed their bill. So it kind of rubs person wrong because back in the day, 60s and 70s, California was a hub for farm workers. So you do have the United Farm Workers Union there based on Chavez efforts, grassroots movement to get better things for farm workers, to get farm workers unionized, to get protection. And even if you're not talking about the money, you need like hospitalization because a lot of farm workers are migrants, you know, seasonal work according to the crop, you move where the crop is, you make your money. So all that is in the background of California and significantly enough, one of the reasons that President Biden spoke up on it about how he was handling things there as governor is because amongst his staff is Chavez's daughter, granddaughter, and she works in intergovernmental affairs. So you see you have past information and current information trying to reconcile themselves in a state where these two things have to be worked out. And you got a governor that's saying no to a lot of the significant legislation that would help everybody be on a more productive position. So right now, California has to rethink their situation. I hope I put the particulars out there well enough and plain enough for you to understand that for him to be vetoing these things 
is not going well amongst the populace. Mar Lago, a magnet for spies, officials warned after nuclear file report found. And this was another one that was like right up there because it has all the elements that you get in like spy movies and things like that. Because this particular article has to do with them finding a nuclear file. So the nuclear file contained information as to an unnamed country's nuclear preparedness, you know, nuclear arsenal, things of this nature. And it's just like right on Mar Logo, Mar Lago, Lago property. All right. <clears throat> so here's how things have been playing out with this situation going on. And remember that, you know, they've been asking for these documents and things like that since he's left office. So Mar Logo, just by the nature of the business, has to have employees. So we'll start there has to have employees. So the Trump organization, in order to staff Mar-a-Lago, had a list of like 87 foreign people that, that had applied to work there. All right. So um, one particular, well, two women were Chinese um, and they were discovered with all kinds of little spy equipment, just like you see in the movies, scan the room for bugs and listening devices and um, copying thumb drives and you know all kinds of devices that you can set up that you just look at in Hollywood movies, they had on the property. So they were deported back to China. Next incident is that because by nature there's a lot of entertaining, people are coming and going and you got the golf course there and numerous people are invited. So this woman shows up. She claims to be a member, granddaughter in the Rothschild family. You know, the big historically financial giant Rothschilds. And um, she even got into it well enough that she was able to get a picture next to President Trump. I mean, yeah, next to former President Trump, on the golf course. Come to find out, she was the daughter of some trucker. Now, I know that sounds kind of demeaning, but he probably owned a massive fleet of trucks, but still he was a trucker. No way related to the Rothschilds. So she got in. So um, it kind of went on, and... If you may or may not remember, even when President Trump, former President Trump, was in the White House, he spent an unprecedented amount of time playing in golf. So you have all this going on, and you got this file there, and everybody's kind of like jumping in what did get found, what didn't get found, you know, what is the, the, the extent of the people that's been around it, the possibility. <clears throat> excuse me, and to top the list, amongst his papers, he had a list <laughs> straight out of Hollywood of all the intelligence agents that go out and get human intelligence. You know, like you see the movie where he's got the list of agents, we've got to get the list or else the whole list is going to be exposed. Exactly like that. So Mar-a-Lago, to put it mildly, is like a hot spot right now. You know, they every time they think they got it, there's a little bit more. There's a little bit more. So that's the latest thing coming out hot off the press. September 8, 2022. News for the day, Thursday. This is a sideshow. I'm Theodore Parker. That's it. Hashtag.